wonder if we can begin the program tonight by having you explain to our viewers just what is quantum physics and why would you find the phenomenon of consciousness to be so interesting? Well, uh, quantum physics started out in, in, the, in the 20s to explain the interaction of light with atoms. That was its, it focused on that. But now it's extended to explain the interaction of, of anything with anything. It's basically physicist's theory of the world these days, and it's been very successful. Uh, so it, there are two reasons, I think, why uh, uh, quantum physics and consciousness have some connection. Um, one is that quantum theory, as most people know by now, is very strange. It has very weird properties. And mm -hmm. You're dealing with the very smallest particles of matter yes, that exist. that's true. Subatomic particles. Uh, mm -hmm. And physicists, to dip, typically we hear that this sort of stuff is no longer solid. It's, it's mostly a vacuum in quantum physics. Uh, not only is it not solid, it's mostly empty space, but it's also uh, probabilities. Just mm -hmm. fuzzy, not even, not even totally real. In other words, uh, particles aren't even particles Particles anymore. aren't even particles anymore. And that, that's, another, that's the, one of the connections with consciousness, that, mm -hmm. that uh, the solidity of matter is dissolving away in the light of these theories and becoming more and more like the fuzziness that's inside our heads. And that's the basic, most fundamental theory in all of that's, physics. That's just, that's, yes, that's the basis of everything that we do in, in physics anyway. And it's, physics it's is, in effect, theory. the basic science of all the sciences. Right. So in, right. in the sense, the, the most fundamental theory of all of science is, is that the basis of reality is fuzzy. It's fuzzy. It's, it's crumbling and is, is, it is uh, ambiguous. That, that's the word I like to use. Mm -hmm. that the, somehow there's a, there's a basic ambiguity at the, at the center of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the center of the, of the inanimate world, just the unconscious world. And uh, so that's the first reason, that there, there are some formal resemblances between quantum theory and what the mind looks like from the inside. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is that uh, physicists are running out of problems. Uh, we've, some, in some senses, we're too successful. Mm -hmm. All the problems that are within our grasp, uh, we've not solved entirely, but it's have solved in principle. So we're reaching for more and more uh, things to capture within this net. Mm -hmm. People are now trying to explain the very creation event itself by using quantum physics. Mm -hmm. And we've just about run the particle trip down to the, to the uh, limit. Uh, now it's only a matter of money. Uh, <laughs> bigger and bigger accelerators, that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. But that, could, that can only go on so long. So many physicists are looking for new, new questions to ask. And the term that I keep hearing is quantum interconnectedness and the notion that separability doesn't exist, that somehow all is one, uh, the way the mystics used to say yes. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is a peculiar feature in quantum theory mm -hmm. called, called quantum interconnectedness. And it was discovered uh, right when quantum theory was discovered. It was found that uh, in the description, in the quantum description of two objects, when two objects briefly interact, and you, then you pull them apart, in the description at least, they never come apart. There's a kind of stickiness that connects them together, so they're bound together forever in the theory. They mm -hmm. never separate, even though they're not interacting anymore. And it was thought that this was just a theoretical artifact. It was nothing that existed in the real world. And physicists noted it, said this is very strange, and then they promptly forgot about it for about 50 years. Um, but recently, uh, due to something called Bell's theorem, new interest has been rekindled in this, in this interconnectedness. Uh, Bell theorem proves that this connection is not a theoretical artifact, but ex actually exists in the real world. I should mention, for the benefit of our viewers, Nick, that you are probably one of the world's foremost authorities on Bell's theorem. Yes. That's what you specialized in. And Bell's theorem seems like the crack in the cosmic egg, in a way. It's, it's the one part of quantum physics that's almost turned everything upside down. Yeah, what, what, one of my claims to fame is that I have produced the shortest proof of Bell's theorem in existence. It's about three lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yes, I... Now, Bell's theorem, as I understand it, goes back even prior to Bell to Einstein and Einstein's disagreement with quantum physics back mm -hmm. in the early days. He, he made his classic statement, God doesn't throw, play dice with yes. the universe. It, at a time when Einstein himself felt he disagreed with quantum physics, as I understand it, and he felt that if quantum physics were true, it would have these horrendous implications, which now turns out are true. Yes. Uh, uh Einstein was, was, was never comfortable with quantum theory, and he basically had three gripes with it, if I can. Yeah. Uh, the, 
the one gripe was that uh, quantum theory is a probabilistic theory. Mm -hmm. It just describes things like uh, uh, the world is essentially random and governed only by general laws that to give the odds for things to happen. But within these odds, anything can happen, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, God plays dice. Einstein didn't like that. But he could have lived with that. Uh, the second aspect that Einstein didn't like was the thinglessness of, of quantum, this fuzzy ambiguity mm -hmm. that the world isn't made of things. It's not made of objects like... Uh, uh, it was put by Paul Davies, uh, the, the notion that somehow big things are made of little things. Quantum theory doesn't describe, describe the world that way. Oh. Big things aren't made of little things. They're made of uh, entities whose uh, attributes aren't there when you don't look, but become there when you do look. Now that sounds it's very, very strange. Like an illusion. Like an illusion, Or the yes, yeah, right. Hindu concept of maya. That's right. It's, Something it's, like it that. Is, it is, the world exists when we don't look at it in some strange state that is uh, indescribable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we look at it, it becomes absolutely ordinary. Mm -hmm. it, like, as though someone were trying to pull something over our eyes. Mm -hmm. The world is an illusion. Einstein didn't like that. He, he felt that the, that the big things are made of little things. Yeah. Uh, as the classical physics, physics the thought. Newtonian view of billiard yes. ball like particles that if yep. you could only understand the momentum and position of each one you could predict everything in the everything universe. Everything in the universe, yes. Uh, uh -huh. Comfortable well, sort of... You mentioned three things that Einstein objected to then there must be one more. Well the third thing is this interconnectedness. Uh -huh. uh, Einstein called, he said, this abs the world cannot be like this uh, because this interconnectedness uh, uh, goes faster than light. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever when this quantum connectedness, uh, two objects could come together, meet, and then go to each into the universe, and they would still be connected instantly, instantaneously. One would know what the fate of the other one was. Mm -hmm. Einstein said, "Now that can never be. Uh, things, things can't. That's like voodoo. In fact, he mm -hmm. used the word. It's like telepathy." He said. Uh -huh. He said, "It's spooky. It's ghost-like. That, that, that." I, he, 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 almost his last words in his biography were. On this, I absolutely stand firm. The world is not like this.